Well, Journey's Art program was essentially about two things. Uh, the first was that it aimed to work with community leaders, um, some of them emerging, some of them maybe more settled in the field, to really skill them around the issue of dealing with the past. Um, how will the society address the legacy of political violence? What are the different ways that that can be done? The second aim was more about the dynamics between the people who were part of the program. So the people who were part of the program were from a range of different political, religious, social backgrounds. Um, and part of the program was really about bringing them together to interact and experience the discussion about dealing with the past and in so doing also maybe change their own perspectives. We were very convinced from the start that we wanted to explore a very much uh, a bottom-up approach to looking at the, at the whole area of dealing with the past and to focus in, on communities. Uh, what communities need to be doing around opening up conversations around dealing with the past and how that could be done by, if you like, significant individuals who we identified as emerging community leaders. Intercom works with a, a wide spread of people, um, mainly uh, people who are from either an ex-prisoner or an ex-combatant uh, background. We thought it was vital that their voices are in this uh, dealing with the past conversation. I think it's unique in the makeup of the project partners. I think the fact that you had a, uh, you know, a high level uh, academic base in terms of Incore and what they brought to the project and that uh, experiential learning, but and, and coupled with PRG and Intercom's ability to reach into people uh, at the cold face of the conflict. We supported the program um, because it fitted very clearly under the P3 program and in particular the theme 1.2 which is about acknowledging and dealing with the past. The whole aim of the programme is about uh, you know, reinforcing um, a stable society and bringing about peace and reconciliation so it was very clear that this fitted. Well Journey's Out programme has been specifically designed for people coming out of conflict to work on the ground with these difficult issues. In any society, uh, the issue of dealing with the past is something which often remains contentious um, and that you can't really talk about your peace process as complete without somewhere looking back, not to wallow in the past, but with a sense of looking back so that you can genuinely move forward. Those would be the three areas we're going to focus on, although we anticipate that the discussion will be quite wide-ranging. Well, the program was, was made up of a number of, of different interactions between the individuals. So over the course of the year, um, a group of you know, roughly 20, 24 people were selected for the program. And then there were a number of different events that they would attend. And some of those would be dialogue orientated and some of those would be skills orientated. You know, looking at key debates around dealing with the past or bringing somebody in to talk to them about uh, dealing with the past type of issues. And so they would engage in those debates and, and skill themselves through that process and through the input from uh, the facilitators and the partners in the program. And then a key element of the program was also, I suppose in the name Journeys Out, which was to journey out somewhere to learn from other contexts. Um, and in this part of the program we use South Africa as the place where they went to observe the process there and meet people there and talk about you know, what is it like in the transition in that context. I think it's unique because of all the partnerships that MCOR has developed with all the participants. Um, it was a, a big partnership and it was a partnership because of the subject matters and because of the, the areas we were all working in. Um, a lot of trust and respect had to be built up between the participants. Participants would be coming from the two sides of the conflict. There's a lot to learn from each participant and I think the participants were very generous in terms of the way they shared their own skills, their own experience. That's been something I think that definitely is borne out in the results. I was very interested in actually learning you know, from the guys from Derry but also learning um, you know, from people in South Africa about their stories and the whole process you know, from start to finish was very well mapped out you know, so it was a great uh, steep learning curve. 
there was an impact from day one with Journeys Out because we were so much needing in the vacuum of peace building, needing something to let people express themselves, come in and be challenged. Supporting people through the process is a challenge because you, you only have limited resources. You can't often do everything that you want to, to do. So I'm, I'm quite sure we didn't always support everybody to the degree that we, we possibly could have, but obviously we kept trying to do that. So one of the ways to do that is through the partners involved in the, in the project and, and having to have a hands-on feel. And of course, in all of the years of the project, the, the project coordinators being really key to, to keeping that contact with individuals going on an ongoing basis. We had an attempt at that four years ago that had been going within a week. The third way uh, that we, we built into um, trying to support people was through the use of mentors. So selecting people who were already engaged in activities in their communities of a similar kind for a long period of time, who could be a listening ear, could work with individuals on some of their own workshops. It's been my life's work uh, in terms of reconciliation. I've been involved in reconciliation for 20 years. Um, so to uh, partner with the programme uh, was allowing me to um, be involved in empowering emerging leaders in my own home community. The backup support from the professionals and the, the directors and the team and the, the facilitators who'd done the workshop was first class and had it not been for their skills and professionalism, project may not have done as well as what it had. And some of the value of this program was the conversations that happened actually outside of the of the structured program itself. One very vivid memory that I'll take away from the program was a two individuals who would have known each other many years ago in the in the heart of the conflict. One uh, in, in the security forces who was always trying to uh, apprehend the other uh, at that point in time had came together in the programme and I sat up with the two guys and a few others um, till about half five in the morning and a conversation happened that I thought was, without being too dramatic about it, magical in a way because the two of them were explaining how they had perceived the other, how they had uh, both tried to kill the other and how a number of years later, they're sitting now in a very positive programme about trying to heal the wounds of the past, deal with the past at a human level, but also for their wider communities. The aspects that I found most beneficial to me would have been um, getting to meet different people from the different backgrounds, uh, the likes of people from uh, the, the Catholic community, or as the other side is, as it'd be called in, in my community. And, and hearing about how they perceive the conflict and how they have dealt with uh, dealing with the past and uh, um, peace and reconciliation and conflict management. I genuinely would say that it has been one of the best courses I have ever been on. There's a lot of hurt in the community. There's a lot of people with, you know, very um, troubled pasts from both sides and therefore, you know, you have to approach these kinds of conversations sensitively. So for me, what I have taken away from it is um, a definite increase in my knowledge uh, and understanding and I've developed a stronger insight in terms of tips and tools as, that I can employ during the course of my work. It was transforming. It was unbelievable to watch how such a diverse grouping of people could, could bond together and, and could very quickly um, share because their empathetic imaginations were, were fired up and I think everyone realised, you know, we're all in this together because we are all after the same goal which is about building the peace process in Northern Ireland so that we can look forward to a shared future. It surpassed my expectations um, quite a bit on sort of two levels in terms of the sort of personal level, the learning experience that it was, um, I think there was a fantastic amount of learning for everybody that took part in it, um, particularly on the, the level of facilitation skills and the level of interaction with each other and how you negotiate conflicts and that sort of thing. And also in terms of the whole issue of dealing with the past, the, the, the 
level of detail that was gone into on the programme, I thought was very, very good. Well, one of the things we tried to do in the programme was to link what we were learning at a community level at a policy level. So what we tried to do was to get the participants to engage with policy makers uh, in two, uh, two forums over the life of the programme where we brought policy makers together and got the participants to say what they had learned. Um, and in that process to try and see if we could find something that was uh, transferable. I think the key thing that we found is that some of the ways that people are thinking about dealing with the past at a community level are much more related to specific community issues than necessarily the big debates about dealing with the past, like truth and justice and compensation and reparations. And I think the contribution of this project was to say that the ordinary issues, like the issue of, say, drug dependency as a legacy of the conflict, uh, where people have become, you know, used medication as a way of, of dealing with the stress of the conflict, that an issue like that needs to be thought of in the context of dealing with the past. If we ever do have a truth commission or something that's going to, to look at the past, I think the, the research and the documentation of Journeys Out, I think, will inform all of those because of the honesty and the integrity that the people's truths were talked about. Rather than talking about the big picture, uh, we've, I think, facilitated people to be involved in these discussions locally uh, and not to wait for some you know, major top-down initiative that will somehow sort out all the problems of the past. Probably my strongest memories are of the different participants interacting with South Africans, uh, be that socially or in some of the forums or in some of the very heated political discussions that happened, but then also how people take that and start to apply it to their local context. We stayed in a township in South Africa um, in what were known as the Mama's Guest Houses. We stayed with a local lady who was as a sort of a bed and breakfast. I had heard a lot of talk when we were in South Africa about freedom, um, about what, does, what freedom meant. Um, so I thought, well, I'll take this chance to ask somebody, because she had said several times how life had changed for her when she got her freedom. And when I did ask her, well, what did freedom mean for her? We were sitting across the table from each other and she looked me straight in the eye and she said, well, it meant I could sit down and talk to you. And I had my hands on the table and she put her hand across and put her hand on top of mine, almost in a challenge and said, I can touch you now. I couldn't talk to you, I couldn't touch you and you in the past before I got my freedom. And to me, that was a really moving experience. For me, I think the most unexpected outcome was the level of forgiveness of one of the mothers in a township for the violence perpetrated on her, her people. It was one of those pure moments of, of human emotion that this woman was able to rise above everything that happened. And I says, but how, Esme, how can you forgive? And she says, because Mandela told us to forgive by forgiving 
I have freed myself. And she smiled, a smile like the South African sun. And my tears rolled like Northern Irish rain. <laughs> the emotion was just, that was amazing. That really was amazing. The another thing that struck me was the, the, the amount of deprivation within South Africa and the poverty uh, that you never hear about. And it, it, it's just, it's so striking to see the likes of the conditions that they live in. I, I kind of was in that situation where I was bogged down with, you know, the, the everyday monotonous chores that I had to do and work and maybe not reflecting so much on, you know, where have we come in, you know, our conflict transformation process and where actually are we going to and what part am I as a practitioner playing in that and just having sort of the headspace and the time to sit down and reflect on that and look at it in an international context, that really when I came home had a massive impact on my work. When I first set out with Journeys Out, I had no idea you know, that this would have such a, a dramatic sort of impact on, on what we do and would help us develop new links with groups that traditionally just we could never engage with. You know? I would like to think that through Journeys Out I have got a more balanced view. As I said, I have a new tolerance for people knowing that the truth as I see it may be not the truth as somebody else sees it. it journeys Out as a process is coming to an end. Uh, and we're really what we need to think about is journeys to, as in where are we journeying towards. Uh, and so I think the learning is to use the experiences and the skill sets that have been gained as part of the Journeys Out programme to empower and take communities to a new future that is shared, that is integrated, that is cohesive and that uh, doesn't deny the past but values the past. You know, I think what's important about this project is that it's not just, you know, finish, the funding's gone and that's it. But I mean, we've, we've actually got a real strong cohort of people who will continue to work in communities, who have made those links with their mentors, with the organisations within CORE. And that work's going to continue. We want this programme to mean something for the future, as opposed to be something that simply dwells in the past. Um, so within that you have individual journeys, but we wanted to capture a sense of society, having a journey out of something and into something better. We cannot take a ride off our ultimate goal, which is for a shared future without violence, without conflict and with prosperity. <laughs>